Hi guys, do you feel like making a game using Scratch? Come with me. Here. Today we're going to create this game. Here we have two spaceships, one on one side and the other one on the other side. They are controlled using the keyboard. So the idea of this is that you create the game and you can play against another person who lives with you in your house. They can shoot, as you see. If a cannonball reaches the opponent, the number of lives of the opponent is decreased by one. Uh, the idea is decreasing the lives until zero. This game is not finished. It doesn't have sound. Uh, nothing happens when when the number of lives reaches zero. But that's because today we've done only the first part of the game, the, the most basic part. Okay, in the next tutorial we will add the necessary improvement. Okay, let's begin with the first part of this tutorial. I think this is gonna take several days. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna switch language to English. You know we're gonna do it in English. And um, we're going to sign in. If you don't have an account in, account in Scratch, you should join Scratch first and create an account. Okay, but that's not my case because I already already have one. You know, you can also use Scratch without signing in. You can just click on create, but the project you create won't be saved. You can download the project. Well, it doesn't say download exactly. I'm going to show you what it says. It says save to your computer. Okay. That way you save a file onto your computer. And the next time you want to continue with your project, you should open Scratch again, click on create, click on file, and click on load from your computer. And that way you could continue your, your project. But anyway, my recommendation is signing in. Okay. So let's do it. Sign in. And now that I am logged in, I'm going to create our project. All right. Once we're here, as we usually do, the first thing is going to be delete this sprite. And we're going to paint the two sprites which are going to be the ones we're going to control with the, with the arrow keys and that are going to shoot at, at the enemy, okay? So, I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to make another circle here. To make it more realistic, we can use the paint bucket and let's see. This one is going to be black. This one is going to be purple. Maybe, yeah, that could be good. Selecting the circle, I'm going to make the outline wider as well as this one. All right, this is our spaceship. And you know, to create the second one, we should only duplicate, and that one could be this way. Basically, we flip horizontal, and we're gonna change the color of it. And da -da -da. And there we go, okay? So now we only have to place them on the correct position. If you think they are too big, reduce the size of them, okay? All right, now we're gonna program our spaceships, okay? I'm gonna begin with my player one. The idea of this player is moving it using the Q and A keys so 
let's use event for that. When Q key pressed, it, sh it should go up, okay? So, uh, in motion, sorry, we're going to move it on the Y axis, okay? The vertical axis. Uh, perhaps 10 pixels is too much, 5 could be reasonable, and move it down the opposite, minus 5. This is not the best way to do it, it is very simple and easy to do, but when I move it, I have to press several times on Q or A, and if I keep them pressed, it moves 5 pixels, then it stops, and then it continues. And the same with A. So I'm going to show you a trick which makes it work much better. Uh, we're going to go to Control and Take. Repeat until. What are we going to repeat? This and this. Let's stop it. And we're going to repeat it until I'm not pressing the Q. So it will stop moving when I release the Q or the A. Look, when I'm not pressing Q, and A. And now you will see this movement is much more fluent, okay? Recommendation. If I were you, I would clear I would create only one sprite. I would program the whole sprite and after that I would duplicate uh, This sprite to create the second that way you will duplicate having the code But in this time I'm going to pass The code to the second sprite this way and I'm going to modify Basically the keys we're going to use to move it in this case, as the idea of this game is that two players can play at the same time and you're going to be using the same keyboard to move the yellow spaceship up, up we, we, we will use key, uh, P key and down the L. Okay, if you could look at your keyboards, do you see they are together? P is above L. That way you see that we can move both of them at the same time. All right, the next step is creating the cannonballs that we're going to shoot from the spaceships. So let's create the first one. It should be a small circle. Okay, that's fine. We're going to program it. Obviously at the beginning of my game, my cannonball should hide. I'm going to change the name of this sprite. As you see, I have changed also the name, the names of these two sprites to work in a more organized way. So this is Cannonball 1. All right, as we were saying, when we click on the green flag, it should hide and it should show when we shoot. How do we shoot? We have to program it as well in our player 1 or spaceship 1. We're going to shoot with letter S, okay? So that we have the this key next to the Q and the A. So with this key we're going to shoot and we have to let the cannonball know that it has to show and move in that direction. So we're going to use a message, broadcast message. This message could be called a one shoot dot sorry. And my cannonball when receives player one shot it's going to show and it's going to go to my spaceship's position because now my spaceship is here but perhaps when I shoot my spaceship is there so my cannonball has to go here so uh, easy PC in motion we have this go to player one so whenever we click here my cannonball will go there 
if I wanted to go here, we could use, well, maybe this one is better, change X, the X axis, okay, the, the horizontal axis, by 10. Let's try. Okay, maybe 10 is not enough. So let's try with 25. Okay, maybe the, the shot start from here. And it's going to change X several times going in, in that direction. Uh, so that's something we're going to repeat. We're going to repeat change X by 5, 5, 5. Let's see how it looks. Change X by 5. How many times? We'll see. We'll see later. Let's use repeat until something happens. Let's see what condition we set there. Okay. Obviously, this is too slow. So let's change X by 8 instead of 5. Okay, that could be reasonable for this game. And repeat until, until when? Two options, until I'm touching the edge or until I'm touching player 2. So, uh, we should use this and these conditions. Touching player 2 or touching edge. What happens after this? We hide. Let's try. Okay. When it touches it, it hides. Let's check what happens when we touch on it. Good. So it works. Let's say if it's important to save the, the project from time to time. Normally Scratch automatically saves our projects from time to time, but it's not a bad idea to, to do it if we if we remember it. Okay, so uh, obviously if we are touching the edge, we shouldn't do anything, but if we're touching player two, we should send a message. Instead of sending the message from the cannonball, we're going to go to player two end. We should do this forever. When I press the green flag, forever. So this is going to be working uh, during the whole game. Okay. If touching, if player two is touching cannonball one, we're going to send a message so that later on we create a counter to know the number of points. Uh, per player one has or to take off a, a life from this player. It depends on how we want to do it. But this message is going to be called uh, sorry, it's here player two act. Alright. And let's create a, a counter here. Let's create it. Later we have to do the same with the with the other sprite. Player two lives. If we broadcast this message, or maybe directly we can do this. Change player two lives by minus one. So what is the number of lives player uh, player two and also player one should have at the beginning of the game? Let's say ten. So set at the beginning of the game when I click green flag, set player two lives to ten. Let's try our game. Let's see. I'm gonna shoot. You see one life less. Let's see if we dodge that cannonball. I don't see any lives. All right. Let's create another variable called player one lives. Let's place it here. 
and I'm going to pass this program to player one, set player one lives to 10, and if touching cannonball two, now we have to create it. Cannonball two, let's change the color of it to yellow or perhaps a bit dark yellow. That one, no, but a solid color. Now we can code it. If touching cannonball two, change player one lives by minus one. And we probably have forgotten some things, which is, uh, yeah, this program should be in player two as well, because if not, we cannot shoot with player two. Obviously, we're not going to use letter S, we're going to use letter K, for example, which is next to the L. And broadcast player to chop. And there's something we gotta change here. In the case of the yellow cannonball, when player two shot is received, show go to player two, change x by not 25, minus 25 in the other direction. And when we're touching player one or the edge, uh, we stop the this. We are going to change x by minus 8 because we're going in that direction and hide. If I haven't forgotten anything, this game should be working already. Let's see, I'm going to shoot. I lose one life. Let's shoot with this one. The one uh, loses one life. Let's dodge. And let's dodge. Okay, fantastic. So this is the beginning of the game. Perhaps we could create a little bit add in a backdrop. I think there's something about the space down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one could could look good. Well, actually it looks awesome. Alright, we have finished our most basic part of the game, okay? Uh, try to do it in your houses, try to do it at home, ask me any questions, and next day we will, we will come with some more ideas to improve this game and to make it even more interesting. Bye-bye!